Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible reading plan is for the 4th of May, and in the Old Testament, we'll cover 2 Samuel chapters 8 and 9, 1 Chronicles chapters 18 and 19, and in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 21, and the New King James Version, 2 Samuel chapter 8, David's Further Conquest. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines and subdued them. David took Metheg, Amma, from the hand of the Philistines. Then he defeated Moab, forcing them down to the ground. He measured them off with a line. With two lines, he measured off those to be put to death, and with one full line, those to be kept alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. David also defeated Hadad. Dezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his territory at the river Euphrates. David took from him 1,000 chariots, 700 horsemen, and 20,000 foot soldiers. Also, David hamstrung all the chariot horses, except that he spared enough of them for 100 chariots. When the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought tribute. So the Lord preserved David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold that had belonged to the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem, also from Beta and from Berothai, cities of Hadadezer. King David took a large amount of bronze. When Toy, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer, then Toy sent Joram, his son, to King David to greet him and bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him, for Hadadezer had been at war with Toy. And Joram brought with him articles of silver, articles of gold, and articles of bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord, along with the silver and gold that he had dedicated from all the nations which he had subdued from Syria, from Moab, and from the people of Ammon, from the Philistines, from Amalek, and the spoil of Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah. David made himself a name when he returned from killing 18,000 Syrians in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom, he put garrisons, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. David's administration. So David reigned over all Israel, and David administered judgment and justice to all his people. Joab, the son of Zariah, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was recorder. Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. Zariah was the scribe. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And David's sons were chief ministers. And so now as I pull up 2 Samuel 9, we have hundreds of messages on the website, danielparsonsministry.com. And so David's kindness to Mephibosheth. Now David said, is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodibar. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Here is your servant. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore you to all the land of Saul your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, What is your servant, that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belongs to Saul and to all his house. You, therefore, and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and he shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, 
your master's son shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, according to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so will your servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both his feet. So now, as I pull up 1 Chronicles chapter 18, we've got hundreds of spiritual messages on the blog, danielparsonsministry.com. And we also um, will go through the Life Journal Bible reading plan uh, once. We'll cover the Old Testament once in the year and the New Testament twice in the year. 1 Chronicles 18. David's further conquest. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines, subdued them, and took Gath and its towns from the hand of the Philistines. Then he defeated Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. And David defeated Hadadezer, king of Zobah, as far as Hamath, as he went to establish his power by the river Euphrates. David took from him 1,000 chariots, 7,000 horsemen, and 20,000 foot soldiers. Also, David hamstrung all the chariot horses, except that he spared enough of them for 100 chariots. When the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought tribute. So the Lord preserved David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. Also from Tibhath and from Chum, cities of Hadadezer, David brought a large amount of bronze with which Solomon made the bronze. See the pillars and the articles of bronze. Now when Tu, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadoram, his son, to King David to greet him and bless him because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him. For Hadadezer had been at war with Tu and had to Doram brought with him all kinds of articles of gold, silver, and bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord, along with the silver and gold that he had brought from all these nations, from Edom, from Moab, from the people of Ammon, from the Philistines, and from Amalek. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zariah, killed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants, and the Lord preserved David wherever he went. David's administration. So David reigned over all Israel and administered judgment and justice to all his people. Joab, the son of Zariah, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was recorder. Zadok, the son of Ahitab, and Abimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. Shavshah was the scribe. Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And David's sons were chief ministers at the king's side. So now I'll pull up 1 Chronicles chapter 19, as I do. We've also got hundreds of really yummy vegan recipes on the Healthy Living um, tab on the menu at danielparsonsministry.com. So the 1 Chronicles 19, Ammonites and Syrians defeated. It happened after this that Nahash, the king of the people of Ammon, died and his son reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanun, the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. And David's servants came to Hanun in the land of the people of Ammon to comfort him. And the princes of the people of Ammon said to Hanun, do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Did his servants not come to you to search and to overthrow and to spy out the land? Therefore Hanun took David's servants, shaved them, and cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks and sent them away. Then some went and told David about the men, and he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Wait at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. When the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, Hanun and the people of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire for themselves chariots and horsemen from Mesopotamia from Syria and Maka, and from Zobah. So they hired for themselves 32,000 chariots with the king of Maka and his people, who came and encamped before Mediba. 
Also the people of Ammon gathered together from their cities and came to battle. Now when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men. Then the people of Ammon came out and put themselves in battle array before the gate of the city. And the kings who had come were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose some of Israel's best and put them in battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishai, his brother. And they set themselves in battle array against the people of Ammon. Then he said, if the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if people of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will help you. Be of good courage and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God. May the Lord do what is good in his sight. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near for the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. When the people of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fleeing, they also fled before Abishai, his brother, and entered the city. So Joab went to Jerusalem. Now when the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they sent messengers and brought the Syrians who were beyond the river. And Shaphak, the commander of Hadadezer's army, went before them. When it was told David, he gathered all Israel, crossed over the Jordan, and came upon them, and set up in battle array against them. So when David had set up in battle array against the Syrians, they fought with him. Then the Syrians fled before Israel, and David killed 7,000 charioteers and 40 thousand foot soldiers of the Syrian and killed Shaphak, the commander of the army. When the servants of Hadadezer saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with David and became his servants. So the Syrians were not willing to help the people of Ammon anymore. And so now, as I pull out the New Testament scripture today, which is Matthew chapter 21, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just search Daniel Parsons Ministry and you'll find my YouTube channel. I've got hundreds of videos on there, really yummy recipes and some adventures of being able to do ministry around the world and the Life Journal Bible reading plan for every day. Matthew 21, the triumphal entry. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a colt with her loose with her loose them and bring them to me and if anyone says anything to you you shall say the lord has need of them and immediately he will send them all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell the daughter of zion behold your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey a colt the fowl of a donkey so the disciples went and did as jesus commanded them they brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus, a prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus cleanses the temple. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thie into a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the worm, things that he did and the children crying out in the temple and saying hosanna to the son of david they were indignant and said to him do you hear what these are saying and jesus said to them yes have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have perfected praise then he left them and went out of the city to bethany and he lodged there the fig tree withered now in the morning as he returned to the city he was hungry and seeing a fig tree by the road he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. The lesson of the withered fig tree. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, sure did I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Jesus' authority questioned. Now when he came into the temple, 
The chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered and said to them, I will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you. By what authority I do these things? The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude, for all count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. The parable of the two sons. Well, what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, The first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness. And you did not believe him, but tax collectors and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. The parable of the wicked vine dressers. Here another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. Now when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? They said to him, he will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but whoever... Whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, and the Pharisees, sorry, heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. That today is the end of the Life Journal Bible reading plan. And please visit my website, danielpersonsministry.com. And I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's reading. Bye for now.